Okay, so how is everyone today? <laughs> so, uh, one uh, week and uh, what time is it? Two? Se yeah, so one week and five hours from now or so, there's, a, there's an exam. Okay, and uh, there's five college algebra sections. This is one of them. Uh, all five college algebra sections will be taking their exams simultaneously. This will be occurring in at least two rooms, possibly three. Uh, and they'll be in large lecture rooms and you'll get there and you'll see all sorts of folks who you may not necessarily know because they're in the other sections. Um, notably, that means that uh, the exam is not occurring at the testing center like the quizzes and it is not during lecture. It's, it's, at, it's this one-off thing that we're going to do at 7 p.m. next Monday, seven days from now. Um, this week, I'll post a new grade in the grade book. It'll be called exam one room. That's the room where you're assigned to go. So um, not all of you may be going to the same room, okay, because, because it's going to be done alphabetically. So if there's two rooms, more or less half of you will be in one room and the other half in the other room. So you're going to have to log into the grade book, look at the grade, figure out what room you're supposed to go to. Also, please don't wait to the last second to find that room because it would be really silly if the exam's going and you're looking for it. Okay. Uh, once you get there, <coughs> once you get there, uh, there will be uh, a whole, like, uh, it, it'll look like a mail sorting station, as in like envelope store, sorting station. And it'll say, you know, uh, let's back up just a little bit. So by the time of the, by the, time of the exam, we, you will have taken and, and quiz five will have been returned to you. So quiz one, two, three, four, five, you'll have taken all of them and they'll all be returned. Quiz 5 is being graded at the present moment. That's what just got finished last week. So on each quiz, there's two graded exercises. So that means that by the time of the exam, uh, we would have handed back to you 10 graded quiz exercises. So I don't recall what I and the other instructors agreed on, but I think it's going to be something like uh, 5 or 6. You get to select 5 or 6 of the quiz exercises that you did and it may be the case, for example, for you, that you, you uh, got a two out of 10 on quiz three, question one. And it would be really excellent if you could somehow improve that. Well, there will be a copy of quiz three, a slightly different version of quiz three, question one at the midterm, and you can go select it. That can be one of your five choices, or maybe six choices. I don't remember what we agreed on. So, between, between now and the exam, you need to look at the grade book, and you need to look at the 10 graded quiz exercises, and you need to make, make a choice about what's best for you, you know, to say, oh, it would be great if I could fix these five. That would be terrific. Okay, so before you, yes? So, on the grade book, you have a ton of codes, and <laughs> all these things. Yeah. So What it, what it is, is that near the bottom, if you, if you, when you look at the grade book, you should sort it in course order, because if you sort it by any of those other orders, it's like nonsense. Okay, so then sort it in course order, and uh, you'll see a grade that looks like, I'm not, I can't remember which, which questions on quiz three were graded, but let's suppose that quiz three, question two was graded then you'll see a grade called quiz underscore zero three underscore zero two. That means quiz three question two. Well, I don't know. I can't remember what the I can't remember what I and the other instructors decided. So, I it, I think what you're saying is it is it going to be only redo or are there going to be new questions? 
Because maybe you're saying, I like all my quiz questions fine, and I'd rather not go to the exam. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> asking. Uh, well, I, ca I can't recall, actually, is, is the truth. So, uh, but I'll know on Wednesday. No, I'm just wondering, like, is it a book? Like, is it like an actual, like, test where we go in there and we're like, oh, can I have, like, quiz three, question two, and then we'll give us that or another question, and then we can sit down and do it. Right. It, you, well, no, yes, and no. <laughs> is, that, is that you'll walk up, there'll be a big station thingy, and it'll be labeled, and you'll see, oh, there's quiz three, question two right there, and you take one. Okay. And then, you know, you, you can bring a list of the one, your, your wish list of, oh, it would be great if I could do these. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, you know, okay, uh, quiz four, question one, yep, I'm going to need that one, and quiz five, question two, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna need that one, and then you select yours. Mm -hmm. Then you, you do them. And then there'll be another box just like it, and that's the input box, you put them in there, yeah. And there may be some questions that are mandatory to encourage participation. <laughs> other questions? Yes? And is it on a replacement system where this grade is better than the one? Yeah, you, you get to have the better one. <laughs> Good, because my, my philosophy, teaching philosophy, is I don't really need you to know the material at any, at any specific time in the semester. All that I need is for you to know this, the material by the time you leave. Okay. So then, yes? Yeah, that's okay? That's an okay <laughs> policy? Okay. <laughs> yes? Right. So, so what, what it is is that you, you are allowed to do up to five. It is acceptable for you to do zero. <laughs> but you can't, because then, yeah, you can't do more than five. You'll be penalized if you try and do more than the allotted amount. Okay, the reason is because uh, uh, I'm only assigned, I'm, I'm, I'm assigned a specific amount of labor that I'm allowed to um, allot. And if, if lots of people try and do I, more or less, I won't, I won't be able to figure out that you tried to do more questions than you were allowed until after the labor has already been spent. But I will figure it out because it's just a bookkeeping matter. But, so I just need everyone to just cooperate on that matter. Otherwise, I have to assess a penalty for you, and I'd rather not. It's really quick about the penalties in the grade book. Mm -hmm. On, online or the written? written. Should be written. Does that just mean that I'm like at some point something that you're looking Well, it, 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 it depends. So the, the written homeworks, uh, they, they, they have all those dots on them and the barcode and all the stuff. Well, what happens is, is I, I scan all of them and then run them through some software I wrote. And if those dots aren't there or if the barcode can't be read, then I have to personally sit there and try and figure out what I'm looking at, and then you get penalized. What if I didn't do anything? It's my printer. Well, here's here's the thing. That's the reason for that for that table that says you're getting penalized. In the end, everybody gets 20 points. That they don't the penalties don't start counting until you go beyond that. Okay, because the, in the end, it's just a, it's like me trying to communicate with you. Come on, you're making me, you're making me work here, so I need you to agree to print it right. So hardly anyone ever goes over 20 points. Yes. So how do you find like the like, like what exactly what Well, you go in the grade book and you look for the grades that look like this. When are we getting our quizzes back to look at? They're all posted in the same place where you download the written homeworks. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> They're all there. <laughs> well, qu quiz five isn't there because quiz five is presently being graded. But everything up to and including quiz four is there. Well, quiz four might not be there because I was just dealing with it just a few minutes ago. Quiz four will be there by the end of the day. 
But they're there, and you can see the little marks that the grader made and everything. On where are they? The same place you download the written homeworks. Oh, okay. So they're scanned up as well? Yes. 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 Okay. So when, where you download the written homeworks, there's a clicky that says blank. That's where you download the blank ones. Mm -hmm. And there's another clicky that says scan. That's, that's what has been... Th those are scanned copies of all of your written homeworks and, and, and quizzes. <clears throat> so there they are. <laughs> Other questions? Yes? Right. There, there's, no, there's no interruption in the quizzing. The, the quiz is just steamrolling straight ahead. <coughs> Yes? We all have That's right. So what that means is that by the end of the semester, we will have taken on the order of 12 quizzes, I think, something like that. That means that the midterm exam is over five quizzes, and the final exam is over the rest, more or less. Uh, and that, that works out to be more, more or less just right, because um, the midterm exam, you have 75 minutes. And on the final exam, you have 165 minutes, which, which is much more time. Other questions? Yes? One more. What should the, in the grade book, what should the quiz be out of? Every question on the quizzes and the written homeworks, every, ex, every single exercise right. is out of 10. But where it says quiz 1, quiz 2, quiz 3, and there's just a number there. That, that is just the sum of all of the ones, of all the, really, I, I'm, at any rate, that's just the sum of all of the, of the questions. So that's out of 20. Okay. That's, well, it, if you see a grade that looks, that's named quiz uh, I, Z underscore zero two, and that's its name, that's the sum of the two quiz two exercises that were graded. So if you made it, if you made an eight and a nine, then this would be seventeen. So if it says quiz O two copy, that that's why I'm reading this two hundred this two hundred numbers because I'm like this this thing right here, that's the copy number of your quiz. Everybody has a different copy number. Gotcha. Okay. That's I the. I thought that was a great. I get it now. So right. So. So the copy numbers go from 001 to however many students are in the class, something like 235 or something like that. Yes? Okay, so I was going to the other day, what's written homework participation and what's written participation? So the participation grades, <laughs> <laughs> the participation grades are, are how much you are participating in, the, in, in those assignment categories. Uh, numerically what they are is that uh, the on for example online homework participation that is let's pretend that you made 100 percent on every online homework that you attempted then your grade would be whatever so so if your if your online homework participation is say 88 percent that means that you didn't attempt some of the online homework homework assignments and if you had if you had made 100% on all of the ho online homework assignments that you did attempt, then you, you would have an 88. And, and the written homework participation means a similar thing. Yes? Sorry. Um, the written homeworks have been scanned in. Some of them, you know, they have like markings. The ones that don't have any markings, was that incorrect or was it? No, it, it's correct. It's the, the, the distinction is, is that I assign and collect far more homework that could possibly be graded. Okay. So uh, the ones that do have markings are graded out of 10. And the ones that don't have markings, I'm just checking whether or not you did something. And they're worth one. So for, 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 for the ones that are graded, they're out of 10. And the ones that are for completion, they're out of one. And C, C means complete, and it means one. OK. Thank you. <coughs> Other questions? Yes? In the gray book, there's something that says redo allowed. Uh-huh. That's the number of questions that you're allowed to redo. What does it say right now? 
Nah, that's not right. <laughs> it's not right, but that, but I'll have that. I'll, I'll get that figured out. I got to check my email and see what the other instructors. We we took a vote, and I can't remember what happened. So if it was like five, it's probably yeah, it's like probably a. <laughs> so if it's five, then we do five questions. Yeah, then you'll be allowed five. Yeah. yeah. Other questions. Exciting times. <laughs> so really, the, the, the midterm is, is an excellent opportunity for you to significantly positively affect your grade in the class. Okay, good. Any other questions? Yes? The exam? 75 minutes. Yes? I'm gonna have to check my email. <laughs> we can see what see what the what because all all of all of us voted and I can't remember what the other two voted for. Well, you'll have seventy five minutes to do something that's not not clear not clear yet. <laughs> I'll have to check my email. <laughs> see what the other see what the other other uh, instructors voted for. Yeah, so 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 there's two questions I need to get back to you. First off, how many, how many re, how many questions are you allowed to redo, and then how many how many questions are are mandatory that you simply must do. Okay, so I, the answer to those questions might be five and zero. They might be five and five. I can't remember. Okay, <clears throat> good. So here we are in section 3.3 called Rates of Change. Okay. So, I'm going to ask a question, and the question itself, to try, to, try and, to try and bring the topic out, I'm going to ask a question, and the question itself is wrong. Okay, so, so the, the way I'm saying it is wrong. Okay, so suppose that we're all going to go on a road trip, and, um, and that we're going to travel to Houston, and just to make the numbers nice let's say that Houston is exactly 200 miles away that's not true but okay we'll go with it so we're going on a 200 mile road trip to Houston and suppose it takes us four hours then how fast were we traveling okay so that's the only reasonable answer but that answer is not right because the question wasn't right okay so so <clears throat> suppose that all of us did go on this road trip do you think it is true that we were traveling at 50 miles an hour at every instant of that trip? No, no right? <laughs> this is not the way road trips go. Road trips don't go that way. So in the first place, you say you're going to leave at 4.30, okay? You actually leave at 6.30, because no one was ready at 4.30. <laughs> That's the first problem. <laughs> this is the first problem, okay? Then, suppose you're, you're in there. By the time, by the time you've... Uh, you know, gotten to the highway because it's so long, someone says, oh, I forgot my cat or whatever it is, whatever it is that you forgot. <laughs> and then, okay, we'll go back. And then by, by the time you, you get back, someone says, I'm hungry. And then, and then, oh, there's a Whataburger, but that's the opposite, it's the opposite direction. Oh, well, let's go anyway, okay. So this is how, this is how road trips actually go, right? That's, anyway, that's my experience of them. <laughs> so, so here, let me, let me restate the question, uh, but let me restate it properly. Suppose that we go on this 200-mile road trip, and, and that we're able to do so in four hours. Then how fast were we traveling on average? 50 miles an hour. So that on average is the key phrase that was missing. It's the key phrase that was missing because, because after all of the events that happened at the beginning, 
you know, a significant part of the trip was was us traveling 95 miles an hour <laughs> because because <laughs> the because the driver was angry. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so 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 there's some function. Why is f of x? Suppose we have two inputs, say this input, input A, and this input, input B. So we have an input A and an input B. Uh, so we could take this input and take it up to the function there and say, ah, there's a point on the function. So because this function is uh, is f of x, and because this is input a, what height is that point at? f of a. So input is a, output is f of a. Further, at input b, What is the output? F of B. Okay, and there's another point. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so at the two points that are on the function, we can draw the straight line connecting them. So the straight line connecting them uh, has a name. It's called the secant line. Uh, for those of you who've taken a trigonometry class, you've probably heard of the trigonometric function called secant. Uh, that's great. Uh, however, this is not directly related to that. Uh, rather, the secant trigonometric function is related to the same thing that this one is related to. Okay, so that's called the secant line. So, to put this back to a car analogy, to put, to put this drawing back to a car, car analogy, um, you know, here we could say that, that, this, uh, that this is time and this is location. Here we are <laughs> at UTD. And then now we're traveling the opposite direction <laughs> from Houston because we're going to the Whataburger, <laughs> right? And then, and then now we quickly make up the lost time by traveling quickly that way. We could have achieved exactly the same result if we had just traveled 50 miles an hour the whole time. That's what that straight line means. Okay, so what we want we want the slope of the secant line. Okay, <clears throat> well, if we continue this over here, remember slope is blank over blank. What's the, what's the catchphrase for slope? Rise over run. Okay, so then, so then, What's the, the usual name for rise is delta y, or the symbolic name anyway. So what's the formula for delta y? Well, it'll be the difference of those two, right? It'll be f of b minus f of a. And then what, what's the formula for the horizontal change, delta x. Hmm. 
Me too. <laughs> so what's this? <clears throat> what do you mind saying? Well, so then the slope of the secant line is the ratio of those two. So the slope of the secant line is m equal to delta y divided by delta x, which is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So the important thing about this formula is that notice that the b's vertically line up and the a's vertically line up. So it would be, in principle, fine if you, if you wrote the numerator in the other order. You could write f of a minus f of b. That'd be all right, but at what cost? Right, so the, the a's are above each other and uh, the a's are vertically aligned and the b's are vertically aligned. Either one. Okay, so this slope is called <coughs> the average rate of change of function f on the interval a to B. Okay. Second line. Very good. Any question about this concept? Okay, so let's have an example. Let f of x be 3x squared minus 4x uh, plus 7. First question, find the slope of the secant line of f on the interval say negative 2 to 3. So what do you think? Same thing as the previous page, right? So we need to compute the, the delta y thing and also the delta x thing. OK. <coughs> so we'll need f at both endpoints of the interval. So how about f at negative 2? So at negative 2, that'd be 3 multiplied by negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 plus 7. Carrying out that arithmetic, that's what? 12 and then plus 8 is uh, 20 and then plus 7 is 27. F evaluated at 3, 3 multiplied by 3 squared minus 4 multiplied by 3 plus 7. Well, that'd be 27 minus 12 is 15, and then uh, 15 plus 7 is what? 22? Oh, look, I made a boring one. That's fine. 
So that means delta y is what? Twenty-two minus twenty-seven, right? Because it's the last endpoint minus the first endpoint. The right endpoint minus the left endpoint. So that would be uh, twenty-two minus twenty-seven, which is negative five. Which is to say that when you, on this interval, when you move left to right, you end up going down five. That's what that's saying. Okay, so delta x, well, that would be 3 minus negative 2, which is 5. So the slope is delta y divided by delta x, which is what? Negative 1. K2. Find the average rate of change of <coughs> f on the interval negative 2 to 3. What do you think? No, it's not a trick question. <laughs> so the point of me sitting up here and making a dramatic silence uh, is is to point out that these are exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same. What's the answer? Negative one. Negative one. Very often, but not always, I, I ask the question just like this. I ask for one of them, and then I ask for the other one immediately afterward. And I, all, I, I get responses like, student did this one, perfect and then had no idea what to do about this one and sometimes it's the other way around student did this one perfect and had to, did, didn't know what to do about this one <laughs> and then sometimes get two different responses <laughs> get, get this one and this one and they're different right which I guess is even worse right because not only did student not connect that these were the same thing but also made an error <laughs> somewhere okay, so these are these are exactly the same thing they're exactly the same thing and what they all, the only reason for the difference, the only reason for the duplication, that is, is that secant line is sort of when you're, when you're imagining it to be a geometry problem, like, like so. You're, you're looking at it like so. Whereas average rate of change is mo more usually when you're imagining it to be some physical, process, some physical process that's occurring during time, like a road trip. Okay, three. Find the equation of the secant line of f on negative 2 to 3. Okay, what kind of things do you need to find the equation of a secant line? Or to, to find the equation of any line, that is. Slope. We have that. That's good. And a point. So we need, we need a point we need a slope. 
So I think we can agree that we already have the slope. Slope is negative 1. Uh, but what about a point? Do we know any points that are on the line? Do we know any points? Zero, 07 is not on the line. I know, I just feel like that happened. <laughs> so, imp so have a look. Have a look at the drawing. A secant line has two points. Right? Secant line, the, and the point that you, that you offered was, was that one. Okay, so we have these two. I claim that, that for the specific exercise, we already, we know these two. What's this one in, in the current exercise? What's this one? What is the right endpoint in the current exercise? Three. And when you, for this function, when you input three, what's the output? 22. So one of the points is three comma 22. And another point in this exercise is when you input negative 2, the output is 27. So we already know two points. From this line right here, that's telling us that 3, 22 is one of the points on the secant line. And the line immediately before it, negative 2, 27, is our second point. So um, which point are we supposed to use? <laughs> dealer's choice. It, ca it cannot matter which one you choose. It can't matter, and as a result of, of it not being possible for it to matter, uh, you should choose whichever one's going to make it easier for you. So I typically choose the one with uh, smaller numbers and the least amount of negatives. So I'm going to choose that one. Uh, but, but, that, but it would work out just fine if you, if you use that one. Okay. So the point slope formula is y minus y1 is m x minus x1. So that's the formula. And now it's just a matter of plugging in. So y minus 22 is negative 1 multiplied by x minus 3. And then. If this was a real exercise, I'd say express your answer in the form y is mx plus b. So we'll do that. Negative x plus 25. Okay. Any question about this exercise? So without a picture, what we were saying was that, uh, well, this is a quadratic. This is a quadratic. And uh, the shape of the plot of a quadratic is a parabola. So somehow, if we were to try and visualize things, there'd be a parabola somewhere. And then the secant line would be sloping downward with slope negative 1. So it might look something like this. OK, interesting. Any question about this? OK. something nice. Okay, 
so some nice function there. <clears throat> I'll say that this is uh, the plot of y is h of x. And my first request is uh, <clears throat> I want you to sketch the secant of h on the interval negative 4 to 4. So what is it that I'm asking of you? The secant of the function h on the interval negative 4 to 4. So what that means, what that means is that here's negative 4. That's input negative 4 right there. Okay, what's the output when the input is negative 4? The output is negative 1, this point right here. So here's a point. Okay, and then here's input positive 4. That's input positive 4. And then what's the output when the input is 4? The output is 3, right there. So what is it that I'm asking you to do? Yeah, I want you to, I want you to draw the line through those two points. That's what I'm asking. This is the secant. Okay, terrific. <clears throat> okay, next request. Please find the average rate of change of h from negative 4 to 4. So, on the one hand, <coughs> you, could, um, you could do this. You could say, well, I can see that h of negative 4 is negative 1 and that h of positive 4 is 3. You could do that. And then you could say, uh, well, if that's the case, then delta y is h of 4 minus h of negative 4, which is 3 minus negative 1, which is 4. And then delta x would be 4 minus negative 4, which is 8. And so then the slope would be uh, the ratio of those two. So the slope is half. But there's another way, and some folks would say easier way to do this. What's another way to do this? Well, we could just, we could just count. Uh, in the following kind of way. So, so how, from here, how far up do we need to go? Well, one, two, three, four. So as a result, delta y is four. And then we can count how far to the right do we need to go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what does that tell us? 
delta x is 8. Of course, that's exactly what we concluded here. Okay. Then 3. I could ask, is there enough time? Not really. So I'll just ask it and, and not do it. Uh, find the equation of the secant line. of h on that interval. And then now that's just like just like the on the previous page because we have a point and a slope. The slope is half. What's a point? Negative 4, negative 1 is one of the points. What's another one? 4, 3. That's another one. So given Given, e, take, take either one of those points, plug it into the point-slope formula, you have your answer. Okay, have a nice Monday.